Welcome back to another episode of TVGP's Critical Misses, show where we're catching up on all the media hits we missed. I'm your host, Boston. Joining me as always, Moonpeer. Howdy. We have a different, I still don't know what to title this, but we've got a, a kind of a different twofer <laughs> season here. So let me lay the groundwork here. Um, Moon, a couple weeks ago, had a really great idea about, <clears throat> let's do another musical season. Sorry, a music season. Musical season is yes, a different not thing. not musical. It's a different That's thing, right. yes. Yeah, this, this is a musical season, but it's not a musical season. You know, you know what I'm talking yes. about. Yes. Um, uh, hey, uh, not all seasons are musicals, but every musical season is musical. That's right. You See, you get it. You got it. Um, <laughs> so Moon thought, let's, instead of doing a specific artist or a specific theme or something, let's do uh -huh. something related to cover songs. Um, yep. And it, this is specifically, I will say, this is inspired because, like, I don't use Spotify. I use Pandora um, mm. for my musical streaming service of choice. Um, and when I get in, I use it mostly for driving. So whenever I get in the car, like, I have a Poets of the Fall station, for example, and I have a Muse station and a Tool station and a Slipknot station and a Heavy Metal station and a so on and so forth. Um, and I one specific cover which I think came up in this playlist. Let me check if it's yes, it is in here. Um, came up and I was like, "That's a really good cover." Like I genuinely think I might like this more than the original. And then the and light then bulb I, went off. <laughs> it clicked with me because I have this quote-unquote controversial opinion. Where ninety percent of the times, if I don't know something is a cover and I listen to the cover first. I always prefer the cover version. Like, mm. don't like, don't get me wrong. I there's another one on here which is cool, uh, but like, I can't help it. It's just like I sometimes I prefer a more modern production style. Sometimes sure. I prefer you know the style it's done in compared to the original. And I, I'm a, especially a huge fan. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I love a good straight cover. Sure. Yeah. Where it's just this is our version of the song. I also love a, hey, this is a hip-hop song, and we've turned it into a heavy metal song. Sure, and like we is... reimagined the entire thing. Yes, exactly. So I started putting a list together of, like, things that you... And this is also, like, brought in by the fact that you had never heard of Within Temptation before. Right. And I sent you on Twitter a long time ago the cover they did of Radioactive, now, mm -hmm. I wasn't ever sure if you listened to it, so spoiler alert, that made my list. <laughs> right. um, uh, and I was like, well, wait, no, because that's a band Boston doesn't know, so I wonder how many covers I can come up with Right. that Boston has never heard that version of it. And then, of course, <laughs> because it's, it's us and it's hashtag content, I was like, Crap! This is a this is a critical message season. <laughs> ding ding like, ding! <laughs> that's, this is this is exactly what it is. Like we we each have this remit, and we do one for the other person. Right. So see how that goes. We're gonna start with Moon's list. I'll break down Moon's list of covers for me, and then next episode I created a list for Moon, um, which was fun because it's a lot of like, well, I love these covers. But I bet he's heard this one before. So I'm going to pull yeah. that out of the list and try and do maybe something that he hasn't heard of. Or while still trying to balance, like maybe he knows what these songs are, like the original songs. Yep. But if not, maybe it's such a good cover that the original doesn't matter. Because like you said, it's so different from, from the other one. Exactly. Um, if you're listening to this and you want to listen to the playlist, we're not doing like a first part, second part uh, thing for this episode or the next one. Um, I will link the playlist here in the show notes for the show. So if you want to stop here or do song by song, either one. Whatever. whatever. I'm not your boss. Uh, I'm not a cop. So yeah, you, you can, you can figure it out. It's right there if if you want to listen to what we're listening to. Yep. Like previously it was easy. You say, okay. You know, go listen to Poets of the Fall. Go listen to X, Y, and Z. Um, right. Go listen to this album. And exactly. Whereas yeah. this one, it's very much a this is a random song by a random right. artist. Right. You yeah, you could Google it and then pull up the YouTube video. But as Boston said, like, like we've done the hard work for to... you. 
<laughs> exactly. The playlist right. is there. You could just right. click a click a button yep. and go. That's right. All right, let's start with the very first one, a uh, cover of the Frozen 2 song Into the Unknown by Panic at the Disco. Started with the... I was almost certain you probably heard this one before, but I, I wasn't have heard this sure. probably about 4,000 times because Flo- Frozen 2 is I my think... daughter's preferred uh, Frozen movie. Uh-huh. Um, so I will say, uh, we I think we agreed about 10 songs. And yeah, I ended up ish, putting... yeah. I ended up thinking, well, he's probably heard that one, and he might have heard that one, plus I put a bonus one on the end, so technically I did 13. Right. But this is one of those ones where it's like, if he hasn't heard it, he should. Right. <laughs> and if yeah. he has heard it, that's fine. Yeah, it's, it's the one I've probably heard the most out of out of all of these, just because of it. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Panic! at the Disco, but it's hard to deny how good Brandon's vocal performance is in this. Um, uh-huh. and it's a, it's a, I guess cool version of that song. Um, cause I, yes, I think I prefer the, the one in the movie, but, um, it's, it's a cool version of it. And I, and I think it's a, it's a cool performance, uh, on top of that. So it's an interesting video too. I, we probably won't talk about yes. these as videos very much, but it's, it's a, it's an interesting video of just like, yeah, it's just this dude. Um, uh-huh. uh, next one is a cover of Tools 46 and 2 by the O'Keith Kids um, man what a cover uh huh uh, this, this might be one of my most rewatched videos of all time like because and because I'm that weirdo the young girl who's singing in this actually is part of a band now uh, okay. she does, I would hope she would be um, she does a whole they haven't put out a lot but I think that's probably because they are also doing full time grown up stuff at the same time you know right um, but I'm pretty sure the band itself consists of at least two or three of these kids all nice. in a band as grown ups which I absolutely adore that stuff because it's like cool. This is great. Like, thank you for for actually following through on your potential of being an incredible set of musicians. Yeah, they forty six and two is is probably one of my favorite Tool songs of all time. Um, I feel like it's it's a a bit of a a deeper cut than something they, else they could have covered. So I, I kind of appreciate that on the surface. There is a, um, lot, a lot of tool in, in the O'Key Foundation. I'm not going to lie. Oh, nice. Um, I, this one's really interesting because I think for 95% of it, it's a pretty straightforward cover. Uh, the drummer does a killer job, the, which is like the, the hardest drummer part and the of bassist. tool. Yeah, the like, bassist does you, a really great job. I, if you haven't seen this video, you probably should, because like the specifically between the drummer and the bassist, mm-hmm. they just have this click where you can tell they're just yeah. vibing off each other's energy the whole time, and it's like, good job, kids. Like, yeah, that's a great job. And tool drumming is always incredibly difficult, so being able to to nail it that well is is really good. But I really like that they introduced piano in this cover they didn't just do a straight cover had they done that it would have been fantastic because they're incredible musicians but i like that they had this additional added layer of piano on top of it to give it just like a little more oomph uh, on top of it i think that was a really clever uh idea for that Uh i i i love this cover this it, it easily is one of my favorite covers of all time and the video is 10 years old at this point like yeah it's it's un, it, unreal how good they are. Yeah, highly recommended. That that one was very very good. Uh, had, next... had you heard that before, or is it? No, I those... actually I actually hadn't, um, which is kind of surprising. I honestly thought that would be one that you would have heard. Like I put the two at the top with the two where I was like, yeah, he's probably had these two. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, it's funny because I put a I put a very different tool cover in your playlist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's to next week. it's interesting to see kind of two dueling tool covers and two like kind of deeper cuts. So uh, next up is a cover of Drake's Dragon Fruit by Paramore. It's actually Passion one of 
Passion Fruit. Thank you. Uh, this is one of the few uh, songs I don't know the original of. Um, yep. But anything with Paramore, I will watch because I love Paramore a lot. Um, yes. And uh, so good. One of the reasons this is in the playlist is because I. I was of the first generation of new metal metalheads. So mm. I was of the Linkin Park, the Corn, the Limp Bizkit kind. Right. That was my introduction into the world of alternative music. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a young and arrogant teenager, I brushed off Paramore as a, you're just trying to do what everybody else, you're, you're Evanescence one wannabes, essentially, sure. is how I viewed them. Right. I did not give Paramore the credit they deserve. I never have until very recently. I feel like so um, many I of us didn't. Yes. Uh, I watched a documentary on their drummer situation. Uh, mm. and that is... Their drummer is insanely talented. And I never give yep. them the credit that they deserve. Um, and the difficulty of what he does is insane. Not, not even to mention... I can't remember her name. The lead singer's voice Haley... is impeccable. Williams? Possibly. Haley something. But it, yes. But as a group, I never gave them the respect they deserve. I never did until within the past like two, three years. Mm -hmm. And if so, <clears throat> if you're a fan of covers or singers doing weird songs, this is not something that Americans are probably aware of, which is the BBC Radio 1 Live Lounge, which is where this cover comes from. Mm -hmm. So, for, for those of you who don't know, basically BBC Radio 1 is exactly what it is. It's a radio station in England put on by the BBC. And they have the Live Lounge sessions, which is when they have someone come in and do a version. Usually what happens is they come in, they do one of their songs live, and then they do one or two covers at the same time. Spotify's just been doing that with their covers thing where they have like here's one live song and then one cover and they they put out like yes. an EP of these paired up songs. Yeah, so the 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 live lounge has I used to a long time ago I used to be on the radio in the place I worked in England and the live lounge was always one I wanted to listen to because that is when you would get people doing wild stuff with covers. Right. Um like like Adele covering like a heavy metal song, that, right. that kind of stuff. Except Adele will do it in her in the Adele style kind mm. of thing. So it's a place to really, really see. Some of them are good. Some of them are terrible. Like in yep. my opinion, and some of them are absolute bangers. Like mm -hmm. it's it's a, a really good source of covers. And Boston's not allowed to listen to them because we will have this season again, would be my assumption, at some point down the line. Oh, probably. Because, minor spoiler alert, I came up with enough covers to do two at two seasons of this. Um, <laughs> That's the, the critical misses way. <laughs> I, I started putting the list together. I was like, crap, I got 19 songs here. And yeah. I was like, oh, well, this is getting shifted. This is getting shifted. This <laughs> is getting shifted. And then I literally kept a separate list for season two already. Right. Um, but the live lounge is something that you should probably check out if you're a fan of covers and like just do a search and see if one of your favorite artists have been on it and you will probably be surprised yeah yeah this is i don't know how how to add a bunch to this cover but it's just really solid like her vocal performance is really good the instrumentation is really solid and she just belts it out man like she just she just does a she sings a great song, which is kind of what she usually does. Uh -huh. So uh, And it's pretty much all a cappella, I believe, on this one as well. Like the I think the drums they use in on set is just bongos, which is Yeah, it's it's very hilarious. minimal. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Very, very good. Uh next up is a cover of Fleetwood Max The Chain, uh by Evanescence. Uh for the for the Gears of War five. Sorry, Gears Five soundtrack. Um, Literally, my note is what this is on Gears Five. Uh huh. I I did not know that, or maybe I forgot the. I'm assuming this is the closing credits of this of the game, maybe. But um, probably yes. I did not know that, but um, a, a spoiler alert here: the chain is a really great song. Literally, every live okay. performance of that is her sucking the soul out of that dude's uh, like out of his eyes. It's really great. Um. 
And then Evanescence does the same thing they do, which is make an incredible song. Uh, like you can, yeah. you can be cool, and you can just like Paramore. You can sit here and be cool and be like, "Oh, Evanescence, oh yeah, bring me back uh -huh. to life is great." Shut up. Um, like all yeah. the songs they made are great. I don't care if it was associated with the Daredevil movie. It was a great song, right? Like, it's a, deal it's with a. It. They they make really great stuff. She has such an incredible voice, and she brings that kind of. That like soulfulness that and that, that energy, has. yeah, that pe that energy, like uh, she brings it to the song. I think they do a really great way. I I also appreciate that it, it has to be a hard balance to strike for a heavier band to do a cover of a song that isn't heavy. Of like, how much heaviness do we put into this? Like, how much do we? amp up the guitars a little bit like how much how much effects how many effects pedals are we stomping on our 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 pedal board here and i think they strike a really good balance between making it just a little bit heavy obviously heavier than the oh. original but without making it like a sort of like the chain yes. you know nothing like that um which yeah. i appreciate it yeah i I love that cover. The funny thing is, is I actually had a different cover of the chain in here, um, uh -huh. and then while looking up that cover of the chain, this one showed up, and I listened to this one. I was like, ah, it's so much better than the one I was going to put in there. Who was the, who did the cover of the other one? Uh, hold on, let me just pull up in my notes here. Oh, <laughs> look, look for your frost out notes. Cover season. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. I can't even find it now. I deleted it. Uh, um, well, alas. Do. do your own YouTube sleuthing, uh, listeners. Yes. Uh, next uh, song so here... Oh, go ahead. I will say, one of the things that I noticed after <laughs> I put this season together was I have a lot of female lead singers on this season. And I didn't realize it until I narrowed it all the way down. I was like, that's a female lead singer. That's a female lead singer. That's a female lead singer. Wait until you that's listen to my playlist. <laughs> <laughs> Like I was, I was surprised, and but then I realized as well that recently I have been showing some respect to the alternative ladies of the world when it comes mm. to lead singers. I was like, I maybe it's just because that's the kick I'm on right now. But I was like, okay, there's a lot of, you know, yeah, a lot of a lot of heavy female singers in this, which I'm fine with. Uh, speaking of, our next song is the cover of Imagine Dragons Radioactive by Within Temptation. The song we were, uh -huh. the artist we were talking about so earlier. So did you, did you actually listen to this when I sent it to you, or did it get put on? I'm 99 percent sure I did because it the the cover especially looked familiar. Um, uh -huh. This is a really hard cover to get my feelings around because the original song is really bad. Imagine Dragons is a band I really do not like. Um, so. The, the... Here's a fun one for you. Yeah. I view Imagine Dragons, and I think I've made this this metaphor a lot recently, they are the nickelback for the generation after after us. Sure, where yeah. They make ridiculously catchy, really popular songs that you either really love or really despise. Yeah, I really, I really don't like Imagine Dragons. Um... So their cover is really good, and they they her voice is really great, and like it's a good song. But in the at, at back of my head, I was always like, it's really active. like it's just it's still the well has been poisoned by Imagine Dragons. <laughs> so uh -huh. it's it's, so <laughs> but I think they do a really good job with poor source material. Yes, uh, so. A little bit of like TVGP law here for you. Mm. One of the inspirations for this show is the fact that a long time ago, and I'm talking like maybe five, five, six years ago at mm -hmm. this point, um, we talked about this song specifically and how the only reason I knew this song was because it was on an Xbox press conference. Okay. And I didn't okay. know who Imagine Dragons were. Oh, uh, your soul was, was free, Moon. <laughs> that, that was one of the 
the seedlings that led to this show, I believe. One of those like, oh, you don't, you've never seen slash heard slash watched this thing? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so it's a good cover. It's a good performance. It's great vocals. It's just still radioactive. <laughs> so, like, it's tough. <laughs> Uh, next up is a cover of Dio's Rainbow in the Dark by Corey Taylor, um, who is the lead singer of about 15 different bands uh, at this point. Yeah, that you've probably heard yes. of. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Slipknot and Most Stone Sour Slipknot, are... For those of you who don't know. Yeah, Slipknot and Stone Sour are probably the, the two biggest ones that you've, you've heard of. Don't, um, don't forget his personal vanity project, CMFT, I, which is Corey... Mother F and Taylor is the name of that band. Good job, Corey Taylor. Um, dude, some of those songs are bangers. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I bet. Like, I mean, uh, I really like Rainbow in the Dark. I feel like that's that Dio nails it on that entire song on the original. Um, I think Corey Taylor is largely a solid vocalist. I'm not going to go to bat for Corey Taylor. He's not, you know, in my Hall of Fame vocalist. But I think what he does is really good. I think he turns in a really good performance here. It It is largely, hey, here's Corey Taylor singing the song. And there's some people in the background playing instruments. Like, it's not it's yeah. not focused on... Don't, don't worry about the little people. It's, it's one of those covers. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> those are, they're just musicians. Don't worry about them. Um, but he, I, I will I, say though, like mm -hmm. Corey Taylor is in my like Hall of Fame vocalists. Like mm -hmm. his range and ability, I adore. And Slipknot was one of those bands that it's like when I'm getting introduced into heavy metal and new metal and everything else, Slipknot was Iowa had just hit when Oof. I started listening into That's that a hell kind of, of music. Um, yep. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. So I think I think this is good, and I think. My only criticism of it is I think it's a little close to the original. Like to the a, a, original. Yeah, like just a little bit too close. Not a negative. Like if you look at Weezer's cover album, like all of those are way too close to the originals. Like why do you bother at that point? Um, but I think this one is, I think this one is really solid, but like just straying a little too close to the original. Uh, next one here, uh, Greatest Showman cover, The Million Dreams. A song by Pink, who I is wasn't another... sure if you'd heard this one. I had. I don't think I. I have because the the video popped up. It's like, oh, Great Showman reimagined or whatever, and I was like, oh yeah, uh -huh. all right, sure. Um, Pink is great. Pink has always been uh, fantastic. Her voice just somehow keeps getting stronger uh, as, I as will the admit, years go is, by. This is another artist who I brushed off when I was a kid. Like yep. the pink is another person who, when I was younger, I had no, it wasn't my genre, wasn't my style of music, wasn't anything I was interested in. And as such, I brushed pink off. And then, like, knowing what I, because ironically enough, I hated pink. I loved Corey Hart, who is slash was her husband, the oh, okay. motocross rider who broke his neck. Um, and I, was slowly introduced to Pink during the the peak X game years, we'll say, mm, um, right. through like Corey Hart mm -hmm. and the Metal Militia and that kind of stuff. And as time has gone past, my respect and admiration for Pink has just like literally gone from derision to no. Pink might be one of the best artists ever to exist on the planet. She's great. Yeah, she and she has a hell of a voice. Like I. I is one of those covers I listened to just without writing notes, and I was like, yeah, this is great. Her voice is as great as it's ever been. Her voice just keeps getting stronger, and she just she does a hell of a great cover of this song. Like, there's just... And, and also, she's covering Hugh Jackman, who is not a bad singer. No, yeah, he's great. So, like, yeah, she she started with something really great and, and somehow made it better. So, oh. yeah, that one's really great. <clears throat> Now for the one I knew you wouldn't have heard. Yeah, this is a Righteous Brothers uh, Unchained Melody covered by Robson and Jerome. Um, you want to you want to give so us a little you know Robson and Jerome history? Are. No, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. At all. Okay, so Robson and Jerome. There was a 
Everybody knows Jerome because Jerome was Bronn in Game of Thrones. Um, okay. He was Tyrion's like warrior aide guy. <clears throat> that's that's Jerome. He has gone on from nothing to incredible things. He was the bad guy in John Wick Three, who killed okay. the dog, or tried to kill the dog. Gotcha. Um, so Robson and Jerome were both actors. They were both on a TV show when I was a kid, and I'm talking about like nine, mm-hmm. called soldier soldier which is a drama tv show about being a soldier and things like that um part of the whole thing was they had the top gun moment in the show where they had like a bunch of people at like a party and then a bunch of, some people started doing singing and robson and jerome sang this in the show and ah. everybody loved the show so much that they released it as a single in the uk ah okay um, and it literally went straight to number one and stayed there for way too long. <laughs> one of those uh, ones where it's a number one for months and months. Yes. Yeah. And I remember, like, this was my first ever exposure to Unchained Melody. I didn't know it was a song until then, despite the fact that I'm pretty sure, like, Elvis has covered it too, I think. I believe um, so. Like, a lot of people have covered Unchained Melody, and it's not an easy song to cover. It's no. It's it's a difficult thing to do, but I thought for a pair of actors, this was a pretty solid performance. It's it's a really good cover of uh, of this song. Like I I I think it's one of those songs that I always I I never know by the title, but when you hear it, I'm like ah oh, yeah it's that uh-huh. song yeah yeah um, exactly the same for me. Like I you like I. What's this Unchained Melody? I don't know what this is. Oh, that's what it, Okay, now I know. Right. It. Yeah, it's that one. Um, so, yeah, I think I this is a really great... I think it's impressive with how perfect these two harmonize with each other. Like, I think if there's anything to be um, super impressed by, I think it's that of just... You guys nailed the one thing that needs to get nailed in this song, which is that harmony, and uh-huh. you did it. Two thumbs up. It's really good. Yep. Um, next up here is a cover of Journey's Separate Ways by Ava Under Fire. Um, this is the one that showed up the, that inspired the whole thing. Yeah. This is... So... This is... I I love Journey. I'm not gonna like beat around the bush here. Um, and you I also love Tron Jenny Legacy. Player. That well, yes, that is true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if anyone doesn't know, this is this is in the beginning of Tron Legacy. Um, and is it this cover or is it the original? No, the original. the original. When he's like in, okay. when he goes to Flynn's arcade, that's playing in the background. Yes. Um, I also love the OC, which is actually where <laughs> my exposure to journey actually started um, oh, okay. i didn't know who journey were i had no idea who they were what the songs were and marissa introduces brian to journey in the oc when she makes him a mixtape well mix cd at that point mm-hmm. um and then journey becomes one of those bands that ryan listens to all throughout the show and I ended up picking up multiple Journey albums based solely on the OC and listening to those one-off songs and kind of got a really deep love of Journey songs Journey's in great. a completely non-traditional way. I will admit, I, I, came, <laughs> right. I came to them in a, in a strange way and I'm fine with that. I When I first heard this version of the song, I was like, oh crap, that's a really, really good cover. Mm-hmm. Like... I might prefer this one because it's more my flavor. It's more my style. It's a heavier composition of the song. And the lead singer, she nails it the whole she time. She kills through. it, man. Uh-huh. Yeah. This this is... I think this is also impressive for the same reason that the Evanescence one was, where they have the, the kind of heart and soul of the song, and they don't make it too heavy like they they amp it up a little bit because that's clearly what their band is um but they don't they don't go crazy with it and um she man her voice is killer um i i hadn't heard i had no idea who they were 
Yeah, like, me neither. I didn't know who they were until this showed up in my list, and I was like, okay. So I'm going to keep an eye out for any Ava Under Fire things that show up on my, like, display Yeah, on, in the car. Anytime it shows up, it's almost always a banger. Like, yeah. Uh, covers or not covers, like... I'd never heard of this band before. It showed up randomly, and it's like, oh, she's got one of those voices, like mm -hmm. the famous lead, like female lead singers, like at least for me, Evanescence, Within Temptation, like that kind of, like that kind of band style. Like she, she's right up there with them. Like in her, the power of her voice is insane, and she really nails the tone too. Like she. She kind of tries to get as close as you can to the original. I, I think she nails it. Like I think it's really great. Uh -huh. um, next up here is a late, uh, cover of Lady Gaga's Shallow by Floor Jansen. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Floor Jansen is the, or was, I can't remember, the lead singer of Nightwish. Mm, okay. Interesting. So um, if you recognize the vocals, that's why. I... I this is one of those covers where I, I'm not sure if I can put how much I liked it into words. It is such an incredibly powerful cover. Um, uh -huh. And it's not a produced cover either. This is I, I, I bumped, this is one I bumped across randomly, completely randomly I found this one uh, from, I'm assuming, a German television show. Where yeah, it looks like a talk a show because there's like covers. four or five hosts there that are all reacting to it. Um, uh huh. And it's like the the power that she has is just oh, it's so good. Yeah, like, this this is I I I don't I like Lady Gaga a lot, and I don't I don't know too many of her songs. Um, so uh -huh. this isn't an original I really knew much about, but. Man, that performance is just... Oof. This is actually from the movie that is probably on Critical Misses um, lists. The one oh, with A Star Cooper. is Born? That's the one. Gotcha. Okay, that that's probably why I don't why I don't know it then. But oh, oh. What, a, what a great cover. Goodness. So, really, really quick, because we're about to move on to the last two and then a hashtag bonus just for Boston because I knew right. you'd like it. Yeah. Um, I wanted. I have been thinking a lot about Chester Bennington recently. Sure. Um, I wanted to find a cover that he did that I really liked, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not a fan of live music. I think we all know that at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this one was one of the best covers that I've heard, and then I struggled really hard to find somebody who covers Linkin Park. Turns out, yeah, it's almost impossible to find covers of Linkin Park that are really good. Um, I, yeah. I checked out the entire festival that they did after Chester's death. They did the the concert like, in his memory. Like a tribute concert, yeah. Um, oh boy, are all of those performances terrible. The concert itself is great and whatever, but mm -hmm. I did not like any of the performances. Jonathan Davies from Korn should not be covering a Linkin Park song, is what I'm saying. Especially when he's this right. old. Like, it's... You don't it's have not, it it's not the right match. Like you, you can't, you can't have every band cover do covers. Like some, some bands just can't yeah. do it. And I'm pretty sure Machine Gun Kelly doing in the end. I think it was was just Oof. like no, <clears throat> like just, no, please, yeah. like nice. no. But yeah, let's let's get on to the, yeah, the, so the we, final two. We have a Dell cover of Rolling in the Deep, which is probably Adele's most famous song done by Linkin Park. Essentially Chester and what's his face? Mike, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, the other guy from Wham. Um, oh. <laughs> I, 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 this one's really hard. I like Chester's voice a lot and I think his vocal oh. performance is really great here. I really love it when you have a live performance like this where the crowd is 120% into it. Um, uh -huh. That's that's the good stuff. Um, I just wish they did something on top of this. Cause, the just piano. Yeah, because very much like... Uh, which one was it? Uh, the Corey Taylor one, where it's just sort of like... Th this is yeah. a vocal performance, like a vocal showcase. I kind of wish they had something more going on it because it, it might also be a side effect of 
I feel like I've heard this song 400 million times because of how huge it was. Yes. Um, which is not a problem. I mean, Adele's great. Um, but I, I kind of wanted something a little bit more. But if you want a showcase for Chester Bennington's vocal style and vocal strength in like a non-screamy performance, I, I think you can easily point to this and be like, yeah, this dude had some pipes. Yeah. So one of my favorite, like, quote unquote, reactors who does music breakdowns, um, mm -hmm. she's a famous opera singer. Um, uh, Charismatic Voice is, is her name. You should check out the channel. She also does covers of, she did a cover of the Final Fantasy VIII intro dressed oh, nice. as the the main bad guy from Final Fantasy VIII. She's Great. a terrific singer. She does a whole bunch of breakdowns. Um, she recently did Lost, which is a gift from beyond the grave in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And I think she, she said Chester Bennington's voice is the human condition. Interesting. I don't think I've heard his voice described so perfectly where he has the whole range up, down, angry, sad, pure. There's so much talent he has about, about his voice. There's like, okay, he might be one of the best of all time, in my opinion. Mm. <clears throat> And then I found out that this performance was done in England, mm. um, and he learned the song the night before. Oh, wow. So in less than 24 hours notice, him and Mike basically put this together, because mm. there's a full video version of it where they're vamping with the crowd a little bit beforehand, and he's like, so this is one from like someone who's local, essentially, because mm. it took place in England. Sure. Um, and if you watch the video, he actually has a reference sheet for the lyrics too. Like, oh, nice. just in case he forgets anything. Right. So like the fact that he can pull this out in less than a day's notice is something truly spectacular. Yeah. It's a very, very cool performance. I, I like it a lot. Um, I, thing is, I don't have anything really bad to say about it. I just wish it had a little more like, oomph. Uh -huh. but you know, it's, it's, you can't go wrong with here's a good singer stretching his voice you know yeah uh on the other side of the coin we have a cover of lincoln parks in the end which is probably an even more famous song than rolling in the deep done by holocene um which this is the one i probably had the biggest turn on because the uh, the guy's performance it says his name is nem raps um, who's doing the Mike Shinoda part. Mike Shinoda parts, yeah. He nails it 100% of the way through. Like, him doing that stuff is like, yeah, you like you, you got it, you put a little bit of a spin on it, you kind of made it your own, but it's still, you know it as as the kind of rapping oh. part of in, in the end. I really didn't like the woman singing when she's doing the background Chester stuff during the rapping section. But then when she yep. takes off for the chorus, like 180 degree turn for me, where it's just like, dang girl, you got those pipes. All right. Like you, oof, I had the you did exact it. same reaction. I was, yep. cause I was listening to this. I was like, it's good. She sounds a little great. bored. Like I, it doesn't, uh -huh. it's not doing it for me, but and I, I think this one was actually also put together during the pandemic. I've got, there's a couple of covers that I found. Some of them are on for next year's, uh, mm. for next season's uh, list, where it's like, oh, yeah, you did this all at home, essentially. Yeah. Like, yeah, very much like, here's three people in three different homes. All right, we're doing it. Um, uh huh. Like, I, was, I, I'm exact same as you, though. Like, I, when it started, I was like, it, it's, it's good. The guy is fantastic. It's good. Yep. But then when it hit that course, I was like, oh, crap. I guess this is another band I'm adding to my stations list on Pandora kind of situation. I, I think my only criticism of this though is the other guy that does the like the kind of additional background stuff really don't like his vocal performance at all. Like he brings the wrong energy, he's doing the wrong delivery. It doesn't ruin the song, but it's a lot of like, ooh, I wish you kind of maybe did another take of this because it's you're you're, you're kind of not matching the energy here. But um, I didn't even think about it until you sent this thing over of like you were just saying there aren't a lot of lincoln park covers because i feel like people uh -huh. have probably done like oh my live performance here i did like 
uh, part of a Linkin Park song is a goof or whatever, but not a lot of earnest Linkin Park covers, which I think is is understandable because to replicate all of that stuff in a cover, like oh. the 15 different things that any Linkin Park song did would have to be tough. Yeah. Um, and th- so, I, think, I think they nail it. Yep. Uh, here's the ironic thing is I think Halloween actually do a better cover of a different Linkin Park song. Oh, interesting. Check out the next season. I spe- <laughs> I specifically had both in this list. I was like, I need to pick one. And right. then I figured, okay, in the end is a really good end of album, essentially. Sure. So, and, an in- and an intro to Halloween. Exactly. So I right. figured in the end is a really good final until I found the bonus one, which we'll get into right. in a second. But I, th- I figured in the end... Because I wanted to end with Chester and then a Lincoln Park cover. That's how I wanted it to end. Right. So finding the in the end cover, I was just like, "Oh, this is perfect." And then I had a different cover. I was like, "Crap, that's better." I'm putting that <laughs> one to one side, and I'm going to keep in the end right here. Um, so it was the less. I think it's the lesser of the two covers. Right. But it was still one of those things where I was like, "This is great and terrible, and great and terrible at the same time." Right. So I want to see how you react to this specific cover. Uh, speaking of our hashtag bonus content here, uh, we have a cover of the title track from Phantom of the Opera by Floor Jansen and Hank Poort. Um, I, wrote, I literally only put this on the list because I know how much you love that song. I wrote is Christ it... Alive, this is a great version. <laughs> like uh-huh. Both of them are just going all out for this song. And they have really yep. great chemistry with with each other. Like, you can see some covers of, I've seen a couple of covers of this. There's a really good Nicole Scherzinger uh, cover, the the woman from um, Pussycat Dolls, who 100% nails this song in a really crazy way. Um, but I feel like when covers of this song fall flat, it's because the two singers don't have that chemistry. It has to be that like push yeah. and pull, almost antagonistic attitude between the two of them, and yes. they both nail it in this one. Yeah, and part of the reason I think Flo nails this is because Flo, anybody who sings with Nightwish, uh, it has to be opera trained. Like they, right. they have to be. Nightwish songs are way too operatic for a regular singer to nail it. And I can't help but wonder how, if Floor ended up doing performances of this when she was in school, or right. when she was doing training, because, like, she blows this thing out the water. Yeah, it, it's really... And it's another... Uh, looks like it's from the same TV show as the previous one, which is, like, four that or five people on a couch, it. just, like, their hair being blown back, of just, like, oh, God. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, man. Um, so I think uh, I think overall I liked I think all of these uh, covers, which is is pretty impressive for covers in general. Because like we were talking about earlier, every once in a while you hear a cover where it's like, oh, I love that song. Let's see how they cover this, and it's like, oh god, oh yes, oh, you should. Who released this? Like, Jesus. That's, that's what I was saying about like the, the BBC Live Lounge. Like the one of the reasons that made listen makes listening to those albums like because they do put out albums and like collections now. One of the one of the the amazing things about listening to them is like you'll hear the first like couple of beats or strum of a song that you know, mm-hmm. and then it's that roll of the dice. Is is this gonna be? You inhale trash? for a second. You're like. Ew. Yeah, is is it going to be trash or is it going to be good? Like, I need, I kind of need to know at this point. Like, how how is this going to go? I mean, as someone who is a huge fan of Nine Inch Nails, there are no good Nine Inch Nails covers. So, the one that's uh, excuse me, uh, oh, excuse me. I I hope you found one because there aren't really any. If you're going to say Johnny Cash is hurt, Trent Reznor doesn't own that song anymore. That's Johnny Cash's song now. So, like, you can't... I don't care. That counts. That counts. Even Trent Reznor is like, that's his song, man. He did it way better than I could, I ever could. So. I don't care. That is a That's the cover to cover. end all covers. Um, exactly. That is the but, prime example other of a than, cover done better. Yeah, uh, other than the best cover of all time. Actually, um... Uh, I'm making. I am making a mission now. 
Nine Inch Nails covers. The one you'll probably find is the Foo Fighters just hired the old Nine Inch Nails drummer as their new drummer, and they've been doing Mm -hmm. a cover of March of the Pigs live, which has been fine. It's been pretty okay. Okay. I'm I'm making it a, a, a point for season two of the there you go. of the cover yeah. season. Striking a challenge. Find a nine inch nails cover. That's right. Um all right. So that was Moon's uh list of fantastic covers that he sent over. Uh certainly no pressure on me uh for this list <laughs> that I sent him many weeks ago. Um Yeah, so it is worth mentioning that yeah, we we've been working like we discussed this in a production meeting. We worked on our lists, and then we literally, at the same time, essentially, we was just like, here's my list, here's my list, cool, let's go. Yep. I was in the middle of Arizona in the car, I believe, coming back, and Moon's like, here's my <laughs> list. And I was like, hey, actually, I finished my list too, here you go. Um, so, again, the playlist, as long as I remember, you know, like 95% chance I will, uh, link to the playlist will be in the show notes for this, same with the very next episode. Um, so you can listen to all these songs and maybe re-listen to the ones you really love. And then we'll be back next episode for uh, my playlist for Moon. We'll see you then. Bye. Yep. Bye.